Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make the Quincy Knit Market Bag. Um, this pattern is my very first knitting pattern, so please bear with me, I'm a crocheter. Um, so if you catch me making um, some mistakes with my knitting or my wording, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I would love to not only correct myself for my sake, but also for anyone else who might be watching and just learning themselves. Um, so just write in the comments <laughs> or send me an email or a message um, because I'm still learning myself. That being said, this is obviously a beginner friendly design because I'm just a beginner myself. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm always here and happy to help. As with all of my video tutorials, this is just meant as an aid to help with the written pattern. So you will need to go to my web my website, lakesideloops.com, and there you can find the free pattern all written out for you. You can also download the PDF version uh, from Etsy and Ravelry. So there are links to that on my website as well, www.lakesideloops.com. For this pattern, you will need two single pointed knitting needles. I used uh, US size six, UK size eight, uh, four millimeter needles. I, mine are 14 inches long and you need them to be at least this long, if not longer, um, because for some of the rows, I could barely get the loops, all the loops on the hook, so you, or the needle. See, I already made my first mistake. <laughs> So you need the needles to be at least 14 inches long. If you can find longer ones, even better. Uh, you will also need, I used Wool in the Gang's New Wave yarn for this project, but really any medium weight yarn will work. Uh, so size four, worsted weight yarn, or 10 ply yarn. Uh, you'll also need, oops, I dropped it. Oh, there we go. You will also need a tapestry needle because the bag is worked up sort of in a long rectangle and then we sew the sides together and we also create the straps separately and then sew them to the bag. So you will need a tapestry needle to do uh, that step or if you're a sewer you could use just thread and a regular needle or if you're a crocheter you could slip stitch um, these pieces together if you're not into using a tapestry needle and of course some scissors. Uh, any scissors will do. <laughs> um, just something to cut your garden with. And that should be all you need for supplies. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna try to make this video as beginner friendly as possible. So I'm gonna be walking you through casting on, knitting all of the stitches. If you already know how to cast on, you might be able to just fast forward through this part, but if you're new, hopefully this will help you. So to get started, um, I have my ball of yarn right here. And I've set aside a length of yarn that is one inch for every stitch that I need to cast on. So in this case, 66 plus 10 extra inches. So I'm gonna, I've set aside 76 inches of yarn in this hand. And this is right at the 76 inch point. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just kind of a guesstimate of how much I'll need. Um, and I'm gonna start by creating a knot, a slip knot. So I'm gonna take the yarn in this hand, bring it over to this side, reach through, and pull that yarn up to create this loop. Oh, it's hard to do this on camera. There we go. All right, so I've got my knot. I'm gonna slide that on to my needle. Now, this end is attached to my ball, and this end is my 76 inches of extra. To cast on, I'm gonna hold my yarn in this hand. I'm gonna take my thumb and put it down over top. Slide it down like this, and loop it back up and then I'm gonna slide it onto my hook. I'm gonna keep my thumb there. I'm gonna take this piece of yarn and I'm gonna wrap it around my needle and then I'm gonna take this loop and bring it over top. I'm gonna to grab this and tighten it. That's, I've cast on one. So now I'm gonna show you that again. So 
my thumb over top, point it down and then back up again. Slide that loop onto my needle. Grab this yarn, wrap it around my needle, and then bring this loop back off of my needle. Take my thumb out and pull it tight. So you're just going to continue on like that until you have 66 loops on your hook. Alright, so I've cast on my 66 and I still have quite a bit of a tail left here. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is just cut that shorter so that I don't mistake it for the, piece, or the strand of yarn that I should be knitting with. And then I'm even going to tie a little knot in the end so that... I definitely don't grab it and mix it up. All right, now we are going to start by knitting the first few rows. So All right, so now for our next row, now that we've done, we've cast it on. Now I'm going to just drop this, let this hang and I'm going to pick up the yarn strand that's attached to my ball of yarn and I knit continental so I hold my yarn in this hand some of you hold your yarn in this hand um, however you do it however you hold your yarn what we want to do is we want to knit all of these stitches so I insert this needle this way and then I yarn over and slide my my stitch off and we're gonna knit all the way down all the stitches all right so I've skipped ahead here a little bit and I've finished my first 12 rows so you should have something that looks like this each row was just knitted pretty basic now with the next row is where it's going to start getting a little bit interesting we're going to do some yarn overs and then the row after that we're going to drop those yarn overs and that will create um, drop stitches which creates our waved look so the first thing we're going to do is knit 14 All right, so now that I have 14 stitches on this hook, we're going to yarn over one and then knit one. So to yarn over, I'm gonna yarn over onto this hook, the one that has the 14 stitches on it. I'm gonna take my yarn, I'm gonna bring it over top of my hook and back down again. And now I'm going to knit a stitch. Now I'm gonna yarn over one and knit another stitch. Now I'm going to yarn over two times and knit a stitch. Yarn over two times and knit a stitch. And so on and so on. This time it's three times and then knit a stitch. three times, one, two, three, knit a stitch, all right so I've skipped ahead to the end of that row and as you can see my needle is quite full um, and in between some of my stitches you can see where I've yarned over, if you need to go back you can kind of count how many yarn overs you have in between each stitch to sort of keep track of everything. All right, so for our next row, this is where we're going to start dropping those yarn overs to create um, the wave look. So we're gonna knit 14 again at the start of this row.
All right, so you can see I've knit 14. And now we're going to drop our next stitch. So what that means is we're just gonna take this loop and we're just gonna drop it off the end of our needle, just like that. Now we're gonna knit one and then drop the next stitch. Knit one again and now we're gonna drop the next two stitches. So all these stitches that we're dropping are the yarn overs that we made in the previous row. One, two. So it gets kind of easy to tell as we go here which stitches we're supposed to knit and how many we're supposed to drop. You can see here we need to drop these three stitches and then knit this stitch. So one, two, three and then knit this one. And now we need to drop these one, two, three, and knit this one. Drop these four, one, two, three, four, and knit this one. So I've skipped ahead here a bit and I finished dropping my first set of stitches for this row. I still have a lot of stitches left on this hook, but I did, or needle. I just wanted to show you that we're creating our wave. So if you pull down on your work on this hook, you can see your wave starting to take shape. So as you can see, your wave is starting to take shape. This wave is going to be smaller or shaped differently than the rest of the wave. So our first row of waves, I'll show you here on the bag. Okay, so this is my finished bag just to show you what I'm talking about. This first set of waves here, the ones that are closest to the top of the bag, um, they're a little bit, they're shaped a little bit differently than the rest of the waves. These ones were made to be a little smaller, a little straighter, so that the top of the bag would be flat. And then these other waves are shaped a lot curvier. Um, so these ones, as you saw from the row we just did, um, you yarn over one and one, two and two, three and three and four at the biggest point. And these ones, you yarn over one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to seven and then back down to one again. Always with 14 knits in between the yarn overs. And when the bag isn't in use, these bunch up a bit. And then when the bag is in use, they stretch out and create really cool kind of see-through peekaboo holes in your bag. Kind of like a mesh, wavy little market bag. So the parts that we've created so far are the top and this wave of one side because the bag is a long rectangle and then we stitch it together along the side. So what we've just done is sort of the bottom of one of the rectangle. And then we're gonna create all of this, flip it over all of this, and then we'll finish off again with the shorter waves and this row of knit, rows of knit. All right, so to create this tassel detail, this is just two tassels at the ends of a long braid. So I've cut three strands of yarn. Um, each strand is about 60 inches long and 10 inches from the end on one end of them. I'm going to tie them in a knot together about 10 inches from the end. And again each strand is about 60 inches long. Now I'm going to braid, so now I have this 10 inch long sort of tail here. I'm going to braid these three strands just in a nice loose braid until I get about 10 inches from the bottom.
And then I just tie my tassel tassels around one uh, strap of the bag, just a simple knot, nice and loose, uh, and just let them hang like that. I really hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial and this pattern. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, I love seeing your pictures on social media, so please tag me. It's at Lakeside Loops. I would love to see what color you made this bag in, how it turned out, how you're using it. Um, also, I would love if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm always going to be posting crochet and knitting video tutorials all for free now. So I would love for you to come back and see more uh, of what I'm working on. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.